today I'm going to go over a Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation. I'm going to be doing version 6 and I know you might be wondering why am I doing this distribution of Linux. It's not free. I know it's not. But many companies want that uptime, that almost close to 100% uptime. An important way to get that is having supported hardware with your OS. There's major vendors like HP, Dell, IBM. They all put, have servers that are supported with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So getting this OS within that hardware will give you better odds of achieving higher uptime. Um, there's also, you know that there's devices like fiber cards, um, network cards that you can purchase that will be supported on this distribution as well. And there's always someone to call with this distribution. You pay for support, you get uh, a phone call, right? You get to open a case if there's hardware problems, OS is not behaving correctly, there's always someone to call, which is important for some major companies if they're interested in that support. Of course, if you can't afford it, there's many other wonderful distributions of Linux that you can have options with. But if your company can, this is a good option if they really need that uptime and that support. So just keep watching and I'll just give you an easy step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do a Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation. Welcome to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. The first option you get is to select language. There's a number of languages available and some additional ones that can be installed if not listed. Next we'll be selecting our keyboard type. We'll be selecting English, but notice there's a number of different keyboard configurations. Next it will take us to our, our storage options. Basic storage is usually commonly used for any disk space that's actually installed on the server itself. Specialized storage can be set storage options, a boot option that is booting off a fiber storage LAN device or an iSCSI LAN device. And then you can go ahead and boot off that. Um, so we're going to choose basic storage. That's the most common with a RAID 1 or 0 configuration. I'm going to choose use all space. There are options where you could do dual boot with Red Hat if you wanted to. So you could choose just the empty space or you could shrink the content of the existing file system. You can notice there's a number of options here. I usually prefer not shrinking the disk space. I notice it fails at times. So I think it's just safer, especially if this is a server you're setting up. Use all the disk space. Use a mirror configuration. RAID 1 is probably the best option. Now we're going to take a look at our file system configuration. We're going to use logical volumes here. So we just need our slash boot, which is an ext4 file system type. The rest of our file system will be under one logical volume. And then we're going to define the different logical volumes. We need at least swap. And we need slash. Those are the two we need, absolutely need, minimum. You could add other file system slashes such as slash home, slash opt to increase um, options. This used to be very commonly done so for additional security because you can mount different file systems with different security options. And by doing that, you ensure that certain file systems are not writable. So if for whatever reason your machine is trying to be exploited, a vulnerability be exploited, then mounted file systems are only mounted as read-only file systems, not write. And due to that, it will add some additional security information, security options. Um, there's also, if you take a look here, there's a number of different ways to reallocate your disk space in your logical volume by selecting the space, um, the file system type. So if you notice, I have slash, slash opt, slash home. So these are the ones I choose. And then it's going to go ahead and ask me to confirm if I want to erase all the space on the disk all the data on the disk. So I'm going to go ahead and select yes to that. Next I'm going to select my host name. But if you notice at the bottom, you want to configure your network devices. This is where it's done. If you don't do this, I notice Red Hat Enterprise Linux does not enable your network device to be um, on at boot. So you have to go ahead and do this configuration here. Otherwise, there's a few extra steps you have to do after the boot, after you boot into your OS. So I'm going to go ahead and configure my Ethernet 0. I'm going to give an IP address under here. If you notice, I select Connect automatically on the top there. So when the machine boots up, it's going to go ahead and connect this device up to the IP addresses. And if you notice, I could add more than one. So you could add a number of IP addresses. As long as it's on the same subnet, it should be OK. So you go ahead and specify your DNS. I don't have any DNS in my configuration, but DNS and search domain to be listed here. So go ahead and hit apply. If you do enter in your DNS, 
you should uh, separate it by a comma if you have a primary and secondary DNS server. So once I am content with my configuration, I go ahead and hit next, accept, I'm going to choose my ge geographical region, put in my root password right here. Uh, you want to make sure it's a secure root password, at least eight characters, upper lowercase characters, special characters, and numbers. I selected to encrypt uh, some of my file systems. And this right here is allowing me to set my password for the encryption that's going to be placed on the file system. So for example, if you have sensitive data in slash home, you might want to go ahead and encrypt that. Um, depending if you, this is a laptop, if there's any chance it might get lost and you're worried about your data getting released, setting an encryption to your certain file system like slash home would be beneficial to that. So once you go ahead and do that, you go ahead and hit next. It's going to configure that password. Right here, it's going to be an option for my boot, but it's also giving me an option to put a password on my bootloader. So example, if someone has physical access to your server, you don't want them booting off a live CD, for example, because then they could just go ahead and mount your file system, especially if it's not encrypted, and go ahead and have full access, full root access to these file systems. So putting a password on the bootloader might be a good idea to help prevent other um, anyone changing your boot options. Now I'm going to choose our software configuration. There's a number of basic um, preset configuration you can choose from web server, identity server, uh, virtualization minimal. I'm going to choose basic server and then I'm going to customize it. You can notice down here at the bottom it has additional packages to install. But I usually like doing the customization and I can see each of the packages that I am going to install. But if you're very new to this, I recommend looking through it at least. I mean, you could select web server if that's what you want to run, but I would always recommend looking through your options here so you get acquainted with it and it's a great way of learning the different uh, packages that are available to you. You could also read the small description here and gain a little more insight on the packages that you can have access to off the Red Hat ISO. There's additional stuff you get from the Red Hat network subscription, but this is everything here available is usually off the DVD that you're, or the ISO you're going to download. So I'm going to choose development. I like to usually choose the um, developer packages just because I, I find cases where I have to compile source code. And then here there's all the other languages. If you want to install an additional language into your server, you can go ahead and select it at this point. And then you go ahead and hit next. It's going to check for dependencies. And if you selected anything that has additional dependencies, it's going to go ahead and pre-select it for you. Now it's going to start the Red Hat installation. First, it's going to format your file system. And after that, it will go ahead and install all the packages selected, as well as any dependencies. It will reboot. On reboot, you'll be uh, presented with this welcome screen. It's going to do, give, prevent you some license information and user information. So first, we're going to agree to the licensing. Next, you want to, if you want to try this, this is the Red Hat Network subscription. Again, I said it wasn't free. I believe you get a trial. If you sign up with Red Hat, you actually can get a trial of your Red Hat Network subscription. And you go ahead and uh, register, and then you put in your email address and password here. It also has proxy. If you have a proxy server in your environment, you can go ahead and configure it here. You go ahead and run Red Hat without the subscription, um, but you again, you might be um, allowing yourself to be exploited with certain vulnerabilities because you're not going to get updates. In this case, I recommend trying CentOS if you really want to. Now we're going to create uh, some local user accounts. It's a good idea to have a user account created other than the root account. That way you have a normal, non- administrative account you can log in with. So you go ahead and type in a username, full name, and password right here. And then you can go ahead later on set up any other authentication such as Active Directory and LDAP later on. It's going to ask you to set up the time. If your environment has a network time protocol server, you can go ahead and configure it here. Otherwise, you can use the Red Hat. Next, you'll install KDump, which is a utility used to dump any information if your machine crashes. This can be useful for Red Hat for debugging purposes. So after that's done, go ahead and reboot your system once again. And on reboot, you notice a password being presented. This is the password for your encrypted file system, right? When we encrypted slash home, this is where it's going to be presented before it allows you to boot. You can press escape here to get more information on the services being started up at boot. And once that's done, go ahead and log in and enjoy your Red Hat install. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time, and subscribe if you haven't. Bye!